with a clean Cavendish de... <laughs> with a <cl> head <laughs> with a looking at these irons no <laughs> also have an elast elastonomer elastomer elastomer these irons are really all about feel Welcome back to the Golf A Lot YouTube channel, Georgina here, and today I've got my hands on some irons that have a huge buzz around them at the moment, especially out on tour. We saw Matt Fitzpatrick win the Dunhill recently with these, and uncontracted golfer Adam Scott also has put these in the bag. Today we are looking at the Ping Blueprint S irons. Straight away, looking at them, they're very clean, very simple with a premium looking design. I would say these are very traditional to ping, but there's been a huge excitement around these clubs, so I couldn't wait to get them in my hands and try them out to see what they can do. Before we get into the video, make sure that you subscribe to the Golf A Lot YouTube channel and also let me know down in the comments what you're thinking about these irons. I've seen a huge buzz about them over on social media recently, so I want to know if you guys are also excited about these irons. Now these irons are designed for the better player, they've got a very thin top line and minimal offset and they've been designed through Ping with their top tour players to make sure that they're hitting all the points for their must-haves. These irons are all about precision, control, accuracy and feel. So with these irons we've got fully forged carbon steel head with a clean cavity design. So looking into some new technology in these irons that we haven't seen before in Ping irons, we have got a precision pocket forging that you can only see in the 3, 4 and 5 irons. So what Ping have done, they've invented this pocket to essentially save 10 grams of weight that can then be redistributed across the rest of the club head to increase the MOI, make it a little bit more forgiving, which even the best of tour players still want in the three, four and five iron, with them being that little bit harder to hit. The pocket also has an elastomer insert, which just helps to ensure the sound and feel that we would expect in a forged player's iron. As usual, with the pin clubs, we're seeing the tungsten tur screw and shaft tip weights, as well as the hydropearl chrome finish, which essentially just helps in wet weather, which obviously, being down in Manchester, we were able to test out. Now, from the very first shot that I hit with these clubs, I was just amazed. Literally, as soon as I got these clubs out and started hitting shots with them, even though, for me, when I looked down at it at dress, the top line is that little bit thinner than my current irons. I wasn't super confidence inspired. I was stood over it, not sure how it was gonna work out, but straight away from the very first shot, I absolutely loved these clubs. The feel was great. I felt as though I just couldn't hit a bad shot with them. Even if I tried, they were really accurate and just really, really fun to hit straight away. With these irons, I was getting huge amounts of spin, even in winter conditions. The stopping power of these irons is so high. I was able to stand over the ball and just know that I had full control over it, which was a really great feeling. I also felt as though on those longer shots, especially with the five iron, with the new technology, I'm not necessarily a player who likes using longer irons, but I really enjoyed the feel of these clubs, especially in the longer set with the pocket insert. I just thought that the feel throughout the entire set was exceptional. So obviously I was really enjoying using these clubs out on the course and then we went to take them indoors into Hooked to use Foresight and to be honest it just got better from being indoors. What I was finding was that with these clubs, obviously there isn't huge amounts of forgiveness because these are players' irons. But what I was finding was that when I did hit it out of the center and I got that sweet spot, my shots were going dead straight. They weren't going offline at all. I could pick out from the data set multiple shots that finished exactly on target, which was just really cool to see with the seven iron that I was testing out at the time. I was getting accuracy levels that I would maybe expect to see from my wedges. So that was really cool to see that on those slightly longer irons. 
So let's dive into some of the actual stats from the indoor testing. We're gonna look specifically at the seven iron. Like I said, I was hitting these shots very on target, but let's have a look at some of the exact numbers. So half of my shots came out less than three yards offline of target, which shows that when you're striking these off the center, they're very easy to control, very accurate. I did, however, have a few that were going off to the left. Interestingly enough, they were consistently the same amount off to the left. Like we said, not loads of forgiveness with these being players irons. Going on to distance, I did see a little bit of a drop off in distance compared to my urn irons. However, I have the T150s in the bag at the minute, which are designed to have stronger lofts to get me a little bit more extra distance. So if I was gonna go get custom fitted for these particular irons, I would probably look to have a stronger lofted version. The reason for this is that I was currently carrying the seven iron on average 131 yards, totaling out at 144, which is just slightly lower than I would like to see from my seven iron, but the consistency and accuracy that I was getting from these definitely outweighs the drop off in distance. Something that was just a little bit interesting that came out from looking at the stats was that my backspin was a little bit lower than I would normally want to see from a seven iron. It was coming out an average of 5,500, whereas I would normally prefer to see that up at around the 6,000 mark. It's just something that was interesting to see. You guys would have to go and test that out for yourself. So coming on to a bit of a conclusion for the Ping Blueprint S irons. As I said earlier, I really enjoyed using these clubs. The feel that you get with them is so nice. They're really easy to control. I was hitting them really close, which obviously is a very high plus point when it comes to irons. The one downside to these, they are expensive. Coming in at an RRP of 200 pounds per iron, for a steel shafted club and 210 pounds per iron for a graphite shafted club. That is gonna to amount to a lot of money when you look at getting a full set. So if you were looking at, to get a pitching wedge to four iron, a full set, that's coming in at 1,400 pounds for the steel set, which is just a huge amount of money. However, with that said, I really couldn't fault these irons. So I can understand why Ping are putting them at that high a price point. Now something else to bear in mind, which I think is a nice feature about these, obviously we said that the lofts aren't mega strong with these, which was why I was losing a little bit of distance. However, they have kept the lofts the same so that you could use these in a blended set with the Blueprint T model or the I-230s. If you were wondering, the Blueprint T is the pure blade model of the Blueprint irons. For me, I prefer this model because it's closer to what I play in irons, which was why I wanted to look at these straight away. However, we will be reviewing the Blueprint T irons at some point on the Golf A Lot channel. So that's been my review on the Ping Blueprint S irons. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please make sure to drop a like on this video. And of course, make sure that you're subscribed to the Golf A Lot YouTube channel. If you want to know more about the Blueprint S irons, you can check out my full written reviews over on the Golf A Lot website as always. Thank you all for watching and make sure to subscribe for more.